Good morning. Yesterday, I posted a video answering a question about a word problem that required us to apply some concepts in combinatorics, namely combinations and factorials, among a few other things, I think. And in an effort to make that video somewhat contained of reasonable length, I began it assuming that you were comfortable with a few things, that you had seen combinations before and that you were familiar with factorials. And so to watch that video and really have any sense of what's going on, it's gonna be important that you are comfortable with both those things ahead of time. That being said, I did get a number of questions asking me to go into a little bit more detail about some of those things. And so this will be the first of those videos. Today, we're gonna to be answering the question, what is a factorial? What was the deal with that weird exclamation point that suddenly ended up in the middle of our mathematical expressions? And so what is a factorial? Well, we'll say that for a natural number, n, n factorial, which will be written n with an exclamation point. Now. This is not an exclamation point in the same way we would use one in like writing an English sentence, right? We're not stating N with emphasis. We're not really excited about the variable N. So excited! So excited! This is just our way of denoting N factorial, right? So when we use this exclamation point, that signifies to the reader, we're taking a factorial. But N factorial, which is written N with an exclamation point, is the product of all natural numbers less than or equal to n. And so to write that out, we could say n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two and so on and so forth, multiplying all of the natural numbers until we reach times two times one. So we take the product of all of the natural numbers that are less than or equal to n. So for example, we would say something like four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one. We would say something like seven factorial is equal to seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, we would say 120 factorial is equal to 120 times 119 times 118 and so on and so forth times two times one. And that would be true for however large of a natural number that we chose and also however small, right? So even two factorial would just simply be two times one or two. And one factorial would just be one, right? Just itself. Now, if we can take factorials of one, you might also wonder, well, what would happen if we took a factorial of zero? Or is there any way we can take factorials of things that aren't natural numbers, of negatives, of fractions, of irrationals? Is there a way we could define 7.5 factorial? And the answer to that question is sort of yes. Um, if you're curious about that, I would encourage you to look at the gamma function. It is a more continuous way to define factorials in a sense. But at least for our purposes when it comes to counting, we're only dealing with discrete objects. We're only dealing with things that can be broken up into whole numbers. So for us, the only other one that we'll really need to consider is what happens with zero factorial. And because this one doesn't really fit the format of the rest, right? we can't multiply by zero and all of the natural numbers less than that, we have to define it. And the way we will do that is we will define zero factorial equal to one. And you might be saying, well, that seems kind of weird, right? Why would zero factorial be one? Wouldn't it like be zero? And I could see why you would say that, but We've seen something like this before when we've dealt with exponents, or hopefully you've seen something like this before when you've dealt with exponents, because we would say something like two to the third is two times two times two, two to the second 
is two times two. Two to the first is just simply a single two, and then two to the zero is equal to one. And the reason that we sort of do this is because one is the multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. In other words, anytime you multiply anything by one, it stays the same, right? But what that also means is one sort of acts as the foundation of multiplication. So all of these things and everything when it comes to taking products is implicitly multiplied by one. And so if we're multiplying three twos, we have two times two times two is one. If we're multiplying two twos, we have two times two times one. If we're multiplying one two, we have two times one. And if we're multiplying nothing, then we just still have that one. And it's gonna be the same kind of thing here with this factorial. We would say three factorial is equal to three times two times one. And also because of the multiplicative identity, it is implicitly multiplied by one. We could say two factorial is two times one and implicitly multiplied by one by the nature of the multiplicative identity. One factorial is one and that's also still implicitly being multiplied by one. And so zero factorial follows this same pattern and we just still have that multiplicative identity as sort of the foundation or the base of anything related to products. And that holds here as well with zero factorial. And so that's great. That's really helpful for us to get a sense of what that exclamation point is doing and how we can actually evaluate that. But I think when it comes to taking combinations or permutations, what you'll also tend to see a lot of is what we ran into yesterday. Nine factorial divided by nine minus four or five factorial times four factorial. It's pretty common that we'll have fractions or have to do division where we have a factorial in both the numerator and the denominator. And so we want to take a look at how we can handle that as well. So let's look at an example. Let's say eight factorial over five factorial. Now we know based on how we evaluate factorials, how we define the factorial that eight factorial is going to be eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And five factorial is going to be five times four times three times two times one. Taking a closer look at this, as long as you're comfortable with your fractions, you'll see pretty quickly that there's gonna be a lot of stuff that we can do to simplify this, a lot of things that will cancel out, right? In fact, five and five, whenever we have something that's the same on the top and the bottom, we can remove that. Same here, four and four will cancel, three and three will cancel, two and two will cancel, one and one will cancel. And so when we take eight factorial over five factorial, we can write that out like we have here, but also once things start to cancel, we'll see that that's really just equal to eight times seven times six, or 336. And once you start to get comfortable with that, and once you start to recognize that pattern, then you can sort of skip that intermediary step. Say for instance, we took 43 factorial over 40 factorial. It would be great if I had the time to sit here and write out 43 times 42 times 41 times 40 times 39 and so on and so forth. But even better than that, we can recognize, well, hey, We've got 40 factorial in the bottom, which is gonna be a product of 40 all the way to one. And we have 43 factorial in the top, and that's gonna be a product of 43 all the way to one, which 43 to one also includes 40 to one. And so we can rewrite 43 factorial as 43 times 42 times 41 and then 40 through 1 is also just 40 factorial. And so now we have 40 factorial on the top, 40 factorial on the bottom, and that entire factorial expression can now cancel, leaving us with just 43 times 42 
times 41 or I believe 18, 1806. Hopefully that helped clarify things in terms of factorials and how to evaluate them and how to use them in expressions and simplify fractions with them. If you do still have any further questions about factorials, please let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.